So how many of us have purchased a self-help book? Or perhaps you received one from a friend? Come on, show of hands, don't be shy. You see, self-help books are designed to help you help yourself. They're books on managing your finances, navigating your career, and even running a successful business. In fact, the subject matter is endless. And as you read the books, you highlight the passages that stand out to you, the ones that resonate and you think are worth remembering. But when things fall apart, how many of us are able to go back to those exact self-help books to find focus and to lift your spirit up? At the age of 25, I was diagnosed with depression. My depression came as a result of the fact that my career may be falling apart and I'm stuck. You see, I purchased the self-help books, the ones that spoke about planning, visualization, attracting things to yourself. And I was on track to achieving my dreams. But my dream was to be a television anchor. And I figured if I could work for one of the big broadcasters, that would be it. The rest is history. And that's the only vision that I'd set for myself. And a few years into my career, my dream was well within reach. I'd worked hard, put in the hours, and I was finally about to get something out. I was quite proud of myself. But suddenly things changed. One afternoon, my editor called me into our office and said, you're not gonna get that promotion that you've been looking for. And I was devastated. I walked out the office and went straight to the bathroom, which as I thought was a quiet spot where I could process what I'd just heard. And when I walked into the cubicle, I could feel the tears building up and I collapsed onto the floor and began sobbing. And the sobs got louder and louder. And before you know it, I'd broken out into the ugly cry. <laughs> so as I was crying, my inner voice, which I believe we all have, said firmly to me, get up, fix your face, and leave. You're not going to be able to get what you need here. So I did just that. I put myself together walked over to my desk and typed my resignation. I left immediately. But you see, in television, you can't just disappear. Because you know the saying, out of sight, out of mind. So I quickly tasked myself at finding the next TV job. And the ones I tried after that, things just weren't working out. And that fire, that flame that I had for this industry was slowly dying. And I could feel it. And then the depression kicked in. It was at that lowest and that darkest moment in my life that that same voice that I heard in the bathroom said, what is the real reason that we've been doing this for five years? It can't just be it. You see, Albert Einstein says that you can't solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that created it. So I had to relook at my situation and be honest with myself because I cannot give up. Greek philosopher Aristotle says that we all have a telos, which is Greek for purpose, or eudaimonia, fulfillment. And he believes that the telos of a human being is happiness. And for a happy life, you need to find that telos. And to find your telos, you need to know who you are. I believe that our thoughts are the greatest mechanisms that we can use to change ourselves and change the world. So, in order for you to be able to do that, you need to ask yourself tough, hard questions. What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe to be the truth? And most importantly, what do you believe is possible? So in order for you to answer those questions, you need to find character strength. You see, everyone sitting next to you is good at something. But what you're good at is not a true reflection of who you are. Your character strength is. And if you want to know more about your character strength, try taking the VIA character survey. It was directed or produced by Dr. Martin Seligman, who's also known as the father of positive psychology. You see, he says by applying your character strength 
to every decision that you do or take, you will be able to find happiness and your life will have purpose and meaning. You'll be able to know what works for you and what doesn't, and also you'll be able to express it. Another thing that I found quite important was to be able to shift inwards and look inside and say, what works and what doesn't? So in order for you to find that telos that Aristotle spoke of, you need to shift your focus inwards. Question your thoughts, your beliefs. Question the things you thought was true about you and could turn out not to be. You can't give up. By applying your character strengths as Dr. Martin Seligman advises us to do, you will be able to make the best decisions for yourself, the decisions that will not hurt you, that don't make you feel drained when you pursue your dreams and won't drain your spirit. You won't compromise your sense of integrity. You'll be able to buy that self-help book and apply it from your position and where you are because we're all not perfect and we don't have perfect situations. But if you know who you are, you'll be able to apply that self-help book to change your life, change your business, and any other thing that you feel needs change. You will finally know what it's like to live from the inside out, and you'll be absolutely unapologetic about it. Thank you.